So let's talk about cyber threats, threat actors, and threat vectors. Essentially, a cyber threat, or just a threat, is the possibility of a malicious attempt to damage or disrupt a computer network or system. So the ability to cause damage or harm to our network is a threat. Now, a threat is carried out by a threat actor, and some of the common threat actors, this is not an all-inclusive list, but here's a list of some of the more common threat actors you may hear about and see once you get into the workplace. Nation-state actors, essentially these are threat actors who operate within the context of a government. We then just have hackers, so this is a general term for just a lone wolf hackers, hacker collectives, and there's different types of hackers. They have different quote unquote hats that dictate sort of like their behaviors and how they behave or how they operate online and what they do. And then we've got hackers that conduct corporate espionage, or you have businesses that conduct corporate espionage to go after rival businesses to get trade secrets, intellectual property, and uh, organized crime. This is uh, crime syndicates that are well-funded and organized that have usually some specific purposes or goals, and they're quite effective at conducting their cyber operations to satisfy their end state or goals and objectives. We have terrorist groups. So terrorist groups have their own cyber actors and how they operate and what they're able to do online. Insider threats, this is some of the more challenging threat actors or threats to discover because you know our insider threats are people who already have access inside the network. So if you have a relatively flat, wide open network, if a network user can authenticate and access a bunch of resources, you can sort of see the damage that an insider threat can cause because there's not much in their way of restricting them to access uh, system access, data, and so forth. And then last but not least, a lot of people sort of leave off the radar and forget about is natural disasters. A natural disaster is a threat to the IT and security of an organization. So let's talk about these in a little bit more depth. So let's look at how threat actors are relatively defined and what puts them into what category. How is somebody just a hacker versus an organized crime hacker? So let's talk about a few of those key behavioral differences. I think first and foremost, one of the most obvious ones is gonna be sophistication. Sophistication doesn't necessarily mean custom tools or really advanced software, hacking tools, if you will. Sophistication can be just their level of knowledge. They understand how network defense works. They know how protocols and systems operate, and they can abuse those protocols and systems and defense strategies because they have a sophisticated understanding of how everything works. They are, in the truest sense, a hacker. They've mastered something to the point of understanding how to get around things that were essentially unintended. Next, we have capability. What is the capability of the threat actor? Are they able to leverage attacks 24 seven? Do they have uh, funds? How many people do they have? What resources are at their disposal? All of the things you might think that roll into capability apply. And when we are the victims of a threat actor in our network, we can start looking at the behaviors of what they're doing, their sophistication, the capability. Look at them, they've built their own uh, infrastructure. They're managing all of these different devices and systems, and we can tell there's a lot of automation. So this speaks to their sophistication, but it also speaks to their capability. Because you can be sophisticated, like I said before, and not have advanced software, but if you have the resources to build advanced sophisticated things, you have capabilities. You can bring your sophistication and resources to provide new and enhanced capability for your operations. Next, persistence and duration of threat activity. How do these threat actors operate? Uh, nation states, they have large budgets. They have long-term strategic goals. They can operate for a very, very long time, so they're very persistent. They have a large duration of their threat activity. They can continue their operational tempo for quite a long time. Whereas if you think lone wolf hackers who you know really don't make money doing what they do, they do it for the thrill of the chase, the curiosity, they just attack because it's a target of opportunity and it presented itself. They don't have the capability, the resources, and that really reflects in their persistence or ability to conduct their threat activity for a long duration. They're very much a one and done type of event. That rolls into operational tempo. And operational tempo very much plays into persistence, but also think about how they operate. 
a lot of threat actors have been uh, geographically associated to regions around the world based on the times of operation. Chinese attackers have been attributed to being in China because they were operating during normal business hours in China. They were attacking U.S. companies at night and vice versa. So operational tempo plays a large role in who may be attacking you based on how they're operating. Adversaries do their own risk management and they have their own aversion. They evade our technologies. They avert risk by conducting themselves differently from one organization to the next. You could almost determine how much a threat actor respects you, or if you want to really get a good understanding of how good your security program is, if you've recently been breached, and while doing cyber threat intelligence, you learn and read about the threat actor who maybe have gained access to your network, and if it seems they didn't really use any of the tools or capabilities that was outlined to them, and they generally use less sophisticated stuff, it's because the threat actor did a risk assessment against your organization and realized that you didn't have a good security program, so they didn't bring out any of their bells and whistles. They used off-the-shelf tools and techniques to hack your network. Why bring out the big guns and the expensive tools and capabilities and sophistication when it wasn't warranted? So just as we conduct risk management and risk assessments of how we defend, monitor, and mitigate risk, adversaries do their own risk assessments. They do their own risk management. They spend a lot of money in their tools. They have a lot of time put into their sophistication and capabilities and their operational tempo. And burning that all because they just want to sling really advanced tools everywhere they attack um, puts their operation at risk. So they're going to manage that appropriately. We can assess where a cyber threat actor may be grouped by their goals and objectives. What are they looking to do? Are they running ransomware campaigns soliciting payments from victims? Well, that might be organized crime. That sounds like something an organized crime would do, and it's traditionally what organized crime does do. So what they're doing, how they're doing it, and the objectives of that activity allow us to put them into a particular category where they might fall into another category. One indicator behavior makes it clearly that they should be defined differently. Last but not least, I'll put in cultural artifacts. So there have been instances when malware was reverse engineered. There is indications of foreign character sets, assuming we're analyzing here in the U.S. where we speak English primarily. Analyzing malware that was collected in U.S. companies, it was identified that foreign character language sets were used, foreign terms, and pop culture references are used. So that helps us identify the likelihood of, or nationality of the author of malware tools or capabilities. So all of this combined, their sophistication, their goals, their tempo, persistence, their capabilities, how they manage risk, all of this stuff wrapped up together makes it pretty easy to determine where an attacker or threat actor would be grouped. The challenge of this is how do we collect all of this data? Collecting all this data means we have good network collection, we have good visibility in our network, we have the right tools, we have the right skills, we have the analytical techniques to make sense of all of this data. So if we can't do all of those things, identifying all these characteristics and behaviors becomes uh, that much more challenging. So let's look at some of these threat actors. Let's start with a nation state. Essentially, nation state actors have a license to hack. They operate within the protection of their state. They are employees or contractors that work for a government, and that government has given them that license to hack, and they're protected within the boundaries of that country. Uh, the, characteristics, the characteristics of a nation state are they're well-funded. Obviously, they have the budgets of a government behind them, and we can sometimes expect to see them use exotic tools and or zero days. These are essentially exploits that were previously unknown. As an example, Stuxnet was a malware that was designed to attack Iranian nuclear centrifuges. These were devices that turned yellow cake into refined uranium. So what made Stuxnet so sophisticated was the fact that it had four zero days in it. Now that might not sound like a lot, but take this little food for thought with you. A good zero day can be worth millions to tens of millions of dollars. So having four zero days could be anywhere from 40 to $100 million of market value. So as you'd imagine, only a large, well-funded, very capable and sophisticated organization would be using 
that number of zero days in one piece of software. And you would imagine that the goal of disabling Iranian centrifuges uh, have a very obvious geopolitical goal, right? So there's not many countries that have the resources, capability, sophistication, budget, and geopolitical objective of causing damage and uh, uh, disruption to Iranian centrifuges. So bringing this all together, we can start to categorize this threat actor as a nation state. One other characteristics or a behavior is that a lot of the tools used by nation states obviously support intelligence gathering efforts. They are surreptitious solutions that gain access and data on users and behaviors and activity and the devices or I should say software are designed to operate for a length of time. They are not just something that runs for a few days and it's over with. They are sophisticated and designed to operate for months, if not years, gaining valuable intelligence and who they target also uh, allows us to get a better understanding of the geopolitical effect of, of that tool's use.